Welcome, uh, Rich Roberts, uh, Thank you. Nobel Prize winner in 1993, uh, for discovering a very important feature of genes. In particular, he, he, he says many times that luck plays a big role in, uh, in science. So please elaborate. Luckiest thing that ever happened to me happened um, on 9-11. Um, this was the time when the first plane went into the World Trade Tower. I was booked on that plane until two weeks before it took off. And I was on my way to a meeting in California. The meeting in California was moved forward one day. And so I took that plane the day before it went into the World Trade Tower. Wow. Now that is luck. That that is luck. So I always try to remember that I'm living now on borrowed time as a result of that. So I guess this has made you appreciate life. Very much so. Very much so. Yeah. I mean, I, I've always really wanted to help other people when I could. And I, I think I felt that more strongly since winning the Nobel Prize, actually. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I found was that before I won the prize, you know, I would talk and People would listen or pretend to listen, but they'd really act. And after I won it, people would listen more intently and very often would act as a result of this. And I thought, well, you know, why not take advantage of this piece of luck that the Nobel laureates really can do uh, yeah. to help cause? And yeah. I've tried to think, find things that have both humanitarian causes, but also have some science. If science is being misused, I, I try to help with that too. I also think it's very important for scientists to learn to speak to the public in language they can understand. I have something I call the grandmother test, which I always give to students and postdocs who work with me. And I say, go and talk to your grandmother and tell her what it is you do in the lab every day and convince her that you are a wonderful scientist and get it to a point where not only does she understand it, but she understands it well enough to go and boast about you to all her friends in yeah. terms that are real, you know, where, yeah. where she's really spreading it. Yeah. And I found this to be actually a, a lot of students find this useful um, to go and talk to the lay public about what they do and explain in layman's terms what it is they're doing. Um, so let me ask you for uh, any sort of words of advice you would give to an aspiring young scientist in Africa in particular? What should they do? The first thing to do is to find out what it is you're really passionate about. So, you know, if you love physics or you love chemistry or you love biology, um, then make sure that this is what you choose to pursue. And I personally, I, I'm a big fan of biology because there is so much that we don't know. And there are many places where we can make interesting discoveries. And it can also have a very profound impact on life, um, some of these discoveries. For instance, you know, the discovery I made for the Nobel Prize some, oh, 1977, long time ago now, um, only about three years ago, was there a practical application of this in medicine? It's been applied by actually an ex postdoc of mine um, to spinal muscular atrophy. Mm -hmm. And he discovered a cure for the disease because the mechanism that caused the disease was based on my discovery. And so it can sometimes take a long time before basic research can, can lead to practical consequences. But almost always, if you're doing basic research and you make discoveries, it will have practical consequences. It may just take a long time. Right. And the nice thing about biology is that because we don't know very much, it becomes much easier to make discoveries. And then once you've found this thing that you really love to do, then talk to mentors, talk to teachers, talk to professionals, read a lot. Uh, and not just about the maybe one thing that you're focused on, read around your subject too and find out how other things, other discoveries may actually make it easy for you to pursue the thing you want to pursue and then find a career path and head down it. But the one thing I would say, and I feel very strongly about this is if you're really engrossed in doing something and then you find out about something that is far more interesting, switch and do it. Okay, don't keep pursuing something if you see something else that's more exciting and more interesting. The, once you're really enthusiastic about something and get into it, work is not work anymore. Work is a hobby. It's fun. 
I don't consider myself to work. And yet, if I ask my wife, she will tell me I work all the time. 